congratulations, August Street or Augusti, whichever it is. I'm sorry. And we're going in into the next match will we'll involve switching on, but nothing else. It will be a normal match. On the blue corner, we have one of my favorite Pokemon, Milotic, Pinsir, and Kelkion. And on the red corner, we've got a Mew, a Nectowl, and a Spoink. Somehow I knew that I like Milotic. Okay, I'm definitely leaning towards the red corner side just because I love Mew too. Not Mew too, but Mew, comma two. But it seems like the blue corner does have a pretty balanced set of moves. Um, Kelpion can has color change, as you know, so it can whichever move that Mew decides to use against it first, it will have to play around that in order to keep dealing good damage to it. And Kelpion does have Shadow Claw. Which it can go to, or Sucker Punch, either one, both are super effective against Mew, and it could straight up get off some damage onto Mew. Yes, indeed. And we will have some switching, so we don't really know what kind of matchup we will have here. We've got two psychic Pokemon on the right side, and don't know the types yet again. Uh, how do you feel about the team's syntaxy? Are you leaning towards the blue corner too, or do you think the red corner has a chance here? Well, I'm looking at the odds, and right now it seems that highly in favor of the red team. Um, I'm always in for some Kecleon Hex, also because of the Sucker Punch, um, but also because it's always switching its type, so I think I'll be on the blue side this time. Well, it seems like our thoughts aren't Entirely, as for right now, agreed with the Twitch chat as the blue corner is still the underdogs, even though the um, payout is slowly evening between the two teams. Yes, but the odds are getting even more and more even. So, in the next half minute or so, the odds can turn. Oh, oh, and God. here comes the serious music from Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Indeed. It looks like there is only 21 seconds left in this betting period, so if you want to get in on this match, now is the time, because the betting period will stop at 10 seconds. Well, or to be precise. Yes, indeed. Also, I'm saying indeed, wait out.
and here we are again. Hello, yes. sister. Our teleprompter was acting up for a little bit, but we are back. Yes, very sorry for that, but now we're back in and it seems like all the Pokemon are still there. Yes, we actually didn't seem to miss too much as of yeah. As Sentexi said, all Pokemon are doing well on each corner. Currently, Noctowl is in the air while Milo Milotic is down on the ground with his full HP. And it seems to be diving underwater this turn. Noctowl goes in for a fly, but this misses unfortunately. Now Milotic goes in for its dive move, and this is it for Noctowl. Yep, and it's as we finally return, it seems like the excitement begins as the red corner is now down a Pokemon, and it will be two versus three from this point on. Yes, absolutely, and as we are shadowy sneaking back in our commentary booths, Wildtick prepares the next attack. Milotic will be diving underwater yet again this turn. Yes, there goes Milotic's dive and it does quite some damage. Effectively bringing down to two thirds of its HP. Here comes Splunk with the extra sensory, but it is a light hit on Milotic because it is a very tanky Pokemon. Yes, Milotic seems even a little overpowered for this matchup. And there comes Milotic with a Dragon Breath, perhaps hoping for the Paralysis on Spoink as it is a light hit. Oh, Spoink raising its defense, going in for some strats as another extra sensor is about to hit in. Yet again, light amount of damage as Milotic prepares its next move, will it go in for a dive again? Boink tries for another extra sensory, but unfortunately Milotic will avoid the attack this turn. Seems like the red team is in quite a predicament yet again as Milotic is just taking all these hits. Oh, those dives are doing a massive amount of damage. It looks like this may be the last turn for Spoink as Milotic dives underwater yet again. Spoink goes in for Calm Mind, so maybe we are judging too fast as it's strengthening its special attack and defense, but I don't think this will be enough anyway. And here comes Milotic coming in hot for the dive! And unfortunately, and Spoink will not survive. Now everything is up to me, will it be able to do the reverse sweep? Hashtag praise Mew. There's a reason my username was Mew2233. Oh well. Now let's see if it can put that to good use. Faith in the OG. Alotic goes in for yet another dive as Mew's horror seat misses. Milotic will be able to get off a free attack this turn with its dive, but it looks like Mew will be able to return with a strong psychic attack. Yes, there goes a Sam headbutt. Very impressive hit as Milotic desperately holds on. Oh my, Milotic tries for a natural gift, but it will fail and Mew get off another Zen headbutt. Oh, it seems like Mew just destroyed Milotic's sweep attempt. But anyway, Blue Corner still has two Pokemon left on their side. Here comes Kekion from the Blue Corner. Looks like the Blue Corner is going in for a sweep. Trying to get off the massive damage from the start as it goes for a Sucker Punch. Yes, indeed, there it is, and it does some massive amount of damage. Mm -hmm. 
Mew does a light hit and kick their arm changed its time accordingly to the attack. Another sucker punch this turn. Super effective hit, and it takes out Mew. What a cheap shot. Yes, this was an easy go for the blue team. Congratulations to all the betters to 87% payout, which is quite decent. Oh god, the music sure got funky. Alright, as we're getting more and more funked up, we're moving slowly into the side game. Yes, and I'd like to remind everyone in the chat that right now your commentators for the hour are me, Lapboxes, and my friend Sentexi. Yes, absolutely. Now we have the chance of choosing any of the four attacks our Pokemon has, but it seems like most people as of now are going in for A, which will be Thunderbolt. Only one token in this token pool for right now. It looks like I can't see Burgriff anywhere. I'm trying to look in the crowd for him, but he ain't coming up. Here we are in the next matchup. It looks like this is going to be yet another normal match. <gasps> oh no! Nope, oh, this is going to be a speed go. match. Okay, let's go. Tighten your throats and prepare your tongue for some very speedy talking. During this matchup, the match is, as you can guess, very, very, very fast. And we have to become temporarily rappers so we can commentate up to date up to speed with this match. On the blue corner, we have Snorlax, Metatite, and Castform with Hail. And on the right side, we got Hippodon, Pseudo Voodoo, the Linux Pokemon, and Banette. So, thinking in this fast game matchup, uh, Red Corner is my, my favorite face view right now. Yes, why do you think so? Well, it seems like they have more of a strong team. Um, Castform leading out isn't, well, to put it bluntly, Castform isn't a very strong Pokemon. And it won't be able to use its Thunder Wave against Hippowdon to cripple it because Hippowdon's a ground type. So, it, as, even though it can go for a natural gift ice, it'll only do 80 damage. And frustration's the same. But Metatite, perhaps, could do good for the blue team with high jump kick. But let's not forget that high jump kick is always a little risky. Yes, definitely. The recoil from that is humongous. Absolutely. Also, cast form is uh, always a little interesting Pokemon. Uh, not only because it's an experiment, but also because of its uh, immersive weather abilities. We've got... Yet again, 55 seconds left. So anyone willing to input, do so now. The odds are highly in favor of the red team as of now. Yes, definitely. Even though there are not many bets in right now, the time is quickly running out. Yes, indeed. And... Um... We will or will not have Snorlax against Banet, which will be an interesting fight. Ooh, Ed, Ed, and Eddie music, yes! Sounds very swingy, jazzy, something 40s-like. Everyone's getting all worried, saying we don't, we don't care about the music, where the music go. We got you covered, don't worry. Okay, now let's go. We have to... We have a speed match to prepare here, don't we? Yes. I'll start first, and then when the Pokemon faints, I'll let you go, Sentexi. Alright, the stage is yours. We are in the Lagoon Coliseum for this matchup, as the match will begin as quick as it was called. The 
Pout on Sand Street will look up a sandstorm, and it looks like Casper will go first, trying for the Thunderway, but it will fail. The Pout on comes in with an earthquake, taking the opportunity to tear open the ground and take Casper on below half health. Castform goes for a natural gift this time. Super effective, but will only do 80 damage to the Poudon as the Poudon takes another Earthquake and just gets rid of Castform. There we go. The Sandstorm rages on. The Poudon still stands. Ironically, Castform isn't prepared for the Sandstorm. Anyway, it goes in for the high jump kick and it hits and does quite a lot of damage. The Poudon returns with a raw, effectively switching out the Pokemon. I don't know if this counts, but let's go on for the Alright, anyway, I will go on. So, Photon goes for another earthquake, dealing a little bit of damage. And Zorx um, went in for Recycle and gets damage from the Sandstorm. Photon goes in for another earthquake, which uh, is a little bit grindy, but uh, slowly doing damage. Snorlax goes in for a tackle, and uh, Hippodon suffers from damage, desperately holds on as Snorlax gets another one damage from the Sandstorm. Hippodon goes in for yet another Earthquake, putting Snorlax in a tough position as it returns with a tackle, and this is it. Hippodon is down. Although Hippodon is down, Snorlax... Oh, no, Snorlax stays in, hangs on with 19 HP. Sudowoodo is now sent out, and Sudowoodo will get to move first and go for the rock slide, taking out Snorlax with a tumble of snow. I'll let you go on, nevertheless. Well, anyway, Sudowoodo does some damage to Rock Slide, but the dead goes in for the high jump kick, and this should be a lot of damage. Yes, Sudowoodo barely holds on. Get, not getting hit by the sensor, though. So the really goes in for another hidden power, dealing uh, some damage, but there goes another high jump kick, and this is it for Sudo Voodoo. And here it comes now, the last two Pokemon are out on each corner, Metatite and Banette. Banette will get the move first, going in straight for the Shadow Sneak, it is super effective, and just as quick as that match began, it is now over. The red corner will take home the 9% payout. Congratulations! Not much money, but it is still something. Some money is still more than no money at all. Whew, and now as we're out of that match, we are no longer rappers. We are just your friendly commentators. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. We can put in our talking back to normal again. <laughs> Which is quite convenient, at least for me. I cannot believe that a difference in payout. It's quite a, quite a wide gap. <laughs> yes, absolutely. This would be a immersive payout for the blue quarter if it had one, but unfortunately it didn't. And as we're back in the side game, it looks like Machu takes out the Oddish in one fell swoop of its Thunderbolt, and we have two tokens on the line here. I know somebody put in a token, but I do not see who. Uh, if you put in that token, come forward, come forward, so we can raise up your hand and say, for he is a jolly good fellow. <laughs> Actually, I did this one because I thought it would be funny to have two tokens back into our pool this time. Well, there he is, everyone. Sentexi is the jolly good fellow. Woo! Okay, I, 